Welcome to Restaurant Influencers powered by Entrepreneur Magazine and Yelp. My name is Sean Walshep, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. We are grateful for Toast, our primary point of sale partner who has sponsored this podcast and has brought us to this incredible table. Uh, in life and in the restaurant business, we learn through lessons and stories. Today we have Nina Manchev, the owner of Forte Tapas here in Las Vegas. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. So where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Oh my God. I mean, I think I live in the city where all of those are, <laughs> are it. But recently I actually went to uh, the Sobe Stadium in LA and saw a concert there and the energy there was was incredible. Okay. But we just have, we have the Allegiant Stadium now. I still haven't been there yet, but I think I've seen some of the most amazing shows here in Vegas. So let's pretend that we go to Allegiant Stadium uh -huh. and that I convince Entrepreneur, I convince Yelp, I convince Toast to put on a hospitality conference. Uh -huh. All the best of the best people. And we're going to put you on the center stage. I'm going to give you two minutes mm -hmm. to explain your story. Can you do that? Two minutes. Yes. Ready? Min ready? Go. My name is Nina Manchev. I was born in Bulgaria, but I came to the States when I was three years old. I've always been a big uh, advocate about uh, exposing people to my culture and sharing uh, what I do and creating. I think I'm an artist by heart and I'm just like basing my life around finding different ways to express myself and connect with people. And Forte came about just because of that. Um, I wanted to connect people to my culture and my cuisine and kind of expose them to something that they probably weren't familiar with. And yeah. I think that's less than two minutes. You I don't did know. great. <laughs> you did great. We we, we try we try like to get anybody fire. anybody that's listening to this podcast two minutes. Practicing your two minute drill, practicing who you are and what you do is something that we don't do enough as entrepreneurs. That's why we put on this show. We're great at doing it in real life. You can't open up a restaurant. You can't open up a business. You can't be an entrepreneur unless you can convince the people around you, the people that love you, that this is a good idea. And they laugh at you. They tell you you're crazy. You try to convince the bank. You try to convince investors. You try to convince the community. All we do is spend our time convincing people in real life. What this show is, is teaching people how to convince people online and through media, because that is how you can get incredible exposure for your brand. Guy Fieri came to your restaurant, diners, drive-ins and dives, and he put on an episode. That is one of the reasons why we are here. The reason I knew about a Bulgarian restaurant, my family is Bulgarian, my wife is Bulgarian, and you are Bulgarian. Yes. We found out about this restaurant because of that show. And what we want to teach other people that are listening to this podcast is how can they do it? How did you do it? How did you get featured on the show? And tell us the story behind the prank that you pulled on Guy. So I'll, I'll tell you the way that that show happened is probably the same way that this is happening right now. It's, it's just a series of events to where I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that it wasn't going to be easy. I knew that I had the support of my family and people that were close to me. And what happened with Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives was one of those moments where you open a business and hoping like that it's going to mean something to somebody. And I remember watching a show and sitting there and being like, how do people like how what do I have to do like to be able to be on something like this? Like, what do I have to reach in order to like how, how long do I have to like share the, and convince people like that this is good, right? Yeah. And there came a moment where I'm like, you know, I don't know if this is for me. Like I was young and like, I, I just didn't have that confidence. And I remember I was sitting in a cafe and I got the email from the producers and I thought it was a joke. And they were like, listen, like we're scouting places in Vegas. You guys came recommended because with the help of like so many foodies and so many chefs in the beginning, and, and the community, like, that's how we got exposure. The chefs were eating here. The chefs were coming after yes. their shifts and, and eating this like crazy and, and they got it. So through the wire, like, that's how we were recommended on the show. And, um, and we were recommended, especially by the other person that was on the same show as us, even though we, nev we don't even know each other. Really? Like, they went to him first and they're like, what place would you recommend? He's like, there's this new place, Forte, they do Bulgarian, you know, all this like different kind of cuisine. It's kind of weird, like you guys should talk to them. And then I was like, I called the lady, I was like, 
this sounds great, but is this for real? She's is this like, for yeah, real? Are you real. joking? Am she's I like, don't prank? get offended. You guys aren't like a like a diner or drive-in or dive, but you guys you you guys do unique cuisine. Like, send us this stuff. And they're like, and then we'll see if you guys will make it on. And I was like, okay. And then a month later, they called. They're like, we're coming next month and we're gonna film. It's like, what the heck? No way. And the same thing with you. It's like, how how how. How does someone, you know, have the opportunity to be on, you know, on doing the show, on the on show the, on and sure. and you know, like, so so I'm glad that I'm here and I'm able to to share my story. But that's that's how that's how it happened, you know. So I'd love for you to talk to the people that are thinking about getting into the hospitality business that have the dream that know how difficult it is. Every guest that we have on the show that has built a a restaurant brand or an online brand. They share how difficult it is. What what kind of encouragement? How old were you when you opened up this restaurant? I was 23 years old. That's incredible. Moved yes. here in Las Vegas and decided to go all in on your I, dream. I, I was 23 years old, and it's so funny because when I when I was 23, I was like, I don't understand why people don't accept that I'm like so young getting into this. And now that I'm 34, I it's 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 just something that happens where I'm like, when someone's like in their early 20s and they're starting something, I'm like, all right, be like, good luck to you, you know? And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I, I'm trying to like rechannel that girl that yeah. like didn't have any fear, that didn't think about like what's gonna happen, but was just like so excited to do something and like knew that it was gonna work. At, like, don't know how, but like knew that something was gonna happen. And I've always like been a passionate about like hospitality. That's where, that's what I went to school for. That's what I, I, I didn't know where in the industry I would be, but for me, I found the most connection with people was through food. Because no matter where you go in the world, like the common language is food. And it's something that you give like of yourself. Like it comes from like the heart for me. And, and that's what we stick to here. It's like, we're not mass producing stuff. We're not like, you know, pre-making just to like feed, feed, feed people. Like everyone that comes in here, they have to wait a little bit longer because the salad is cut. This is made by scratch. Yeah, we have like a little bit of systems to shorten the time, but every single thing is made, you know, fresh, like how you would eat it at like our house, you know, like that kind of thing. So my biggest thing was always like hospitality. I like connecting with people, but sometimes I get shy. Like sometimes I don't want to be like in the center of attention, but this is like my way of being like, I love you. Like, yeah. you know, I think that's very important. I think it's one of the lessons that we tried to talk to you know, the viewers and the listeners about is we put all the love into our business, into our restaurant, and no matter where you open up your restaurant, you hope that people are going to come and you hope that people are going to talk yeah. about you. You hope that people are going to recommend you to diners, drive-ins and dives or to whatever show it is so that you can get more exposure so that you can actually make it. But so much of the time we have to come out of our own shell and out of our own comfort yes. to say no one else is going to tell our story the way that you're going to tell your story. Yeah the way that your father is going to tell the story. Yep. We're going to put a link in the show notes about the clip of the joke that you guys yeah. played on Guy Fieri because it's absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Can you bring us behind the scenes? Did the producers tell you to do that? Yeah. It was, okay, so tell, tell us, tell, tell everybody how that happened. So, uh, because I think they filmed for like two or three days. I don't think people know that how long, how long it takes. Because, yeah. you know, and I, I learned about B-roll and all this other stuff. But so the first two days, we filmed with them and we like we just got along with all the whole staff, all the team. Like it was simpatico, like we were joking and stuff like that. I was nervous as heck. Like this was <laughs> this was like it was just such a nerve wracking moment. And then <laughs> harsh, harsher language than was. So Yeah, my wife has a shirt that says, I'm not yelling, I'm just Bulgarian. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Perfect. So it pretty much sums it up. Um, what does Bulgarian hospitality mean? What does it mean to you? I think I think Bulgarians are very hospitable people. I think um, I think it's it's a lot about pride in what you do and who you are and then relaying that to somebody else, you know, and um, because because what I do reflects on who I am as a person and how I welcome you is that. But it, it, it comes from the heart, you know, and I think I think. If someone who's Bulgarian welcomes you into the, their home, that's real. You know, it's not, you know, and we're in Vegas where, where hospitality is number one, right? Yeah. But it's not always a real interaction. It's a transaction. It's a transaction. Yeah. So I think if, if 
a Bulgarian person invites you to their home, then you know that that's like from the heart. Yeah. It's with love. You know that Baba, the grandma, approves yes. of it. <laughs> yes. Because for the most part, if, 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 if we don't like you, you will know. Yes. You will know. Yes. So. So we talk a lot about technology on this show. Obviously, Toast is our title sponsor. I found out that you guys have Toast. Yes. What, what made you switch to Toast and why was it so important? So I think the system that I had before that, I don't even know what system I had before that, but Toast it, it just streamlined all my processes. It, you know, I have the handhelds, which was a big selling point for me so that, you know, we can take orders at the table, but they just make everything so easy. You know, I can manage, I can manage my inventory. I can manage, uh, my, my labor. Um, I can manage, you know, all the sales. I can, I can just look at everything all at the same time. I haven't had any issues with them. And when I call the customer support, like always like available. So yeah. That's what it, that's why I like using them. I noticed that you have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things we talk about a lot is, <laughs> yeah. you know, storytelling online. It's smartphone storytelling is what we call it. And people that listen to this show, no matter what, we have the greatest tool that we've ever been given, which is our smartphone that we can create content for all these different platforms. We don't have to create the platform that's already there. Yeah. You created this YouTube channel. How has that helped your business? You know, it. I don't know now, but I think people can revisit that that sort of space. So when quarantine happened, we weren't doing a lot of delivery and takeout. So the shutdown was like a shutdown. And I'm like, for me, the most important thing was how, how do I still maintain the relationship with our customers? Like, how do we still interact with them even though they're not in the restaurant? So I started preparing these kits uh, of our different recipes. So like Shopska salad or this. So I'd prepare these kits, I'd post it online, people would come pick up their kits, and then Sundays we would cook together live on YouTube. Amazing. So you're cooking yes. the Bulgarian dish, yes. you're teaching them how to cook yes. in their homes. And and for me it was like, I, so, so now it's like they connect with the food. So they see what it takes to make this salad. Yes. They see what it takes to make this. You know, where it's like, if you just serve it at the table, it's like, why does it take so long or that, what, whatever it is. Yeah. But they actually get to feel the ingredients, how much it takes for each one so they can recreate it. Like, cause I'm a visual learner like that. I'm not the best chef, but like I can, I can, I can hold my own. Right. But I, I learned through like visualizing things and putting it together. And I wanted to take these things that seem very complicated and very foreign and make them very simple for people. And it worked because the next day, like on Instagram, you see everybody's everybody's stuff looked better than what I did. That's amazing. Which was so incredible because yeah. like I would make this and it would look kind of whatever, but theirs was, was like fluffy and it had and they took these like beautiful pictures yes. and the whole feed was just like them being so proud of like what they've what they've created. So but I think that's yeah. so important for people to understand is that the biggest fear is that you have a protected recipe in a restaurant, yeah. that this is why people come in. They come in because I can do it and nobody else can do it. In fact, that's the transaction side of hospitality. Once you go inside their home and you share with the secrets with them, now you've empowered them to make it. Yeah. Every time they make it, they think of your restaurant. Exactly. They think of you mm -hmm. and they come back to support you even more than they did before because you were willing to share of yourself. But that's why, I mean, you, you're in the industry too. You, you know, I think I think in the beginning when you start off, you're very like, this is mine and I have yes. to like this and this. Exactly. But then over time, you're like, and you realize that life goes on. There's always going to be someone who, who does something. Yeah. And it's like, if you're constantly trying to compete, if you're constantly trying to prove yourself, then, then yeah, they're going to pass you by. But if you just stick to like what you're doing and do it great and do it right, no one's going to be able to like beat that. You know, yes. so that's, I think that's something we have to learn. So you also have another business. Yeah. This is very important for people that are in the restaurant. What we try to do is teach people that a standard restaurant profit and loss statement is a very scary place to be. Yes. It's a very difficult place to make money. Yes. So once we can start to find different streams of revenue for a side business or our business, whatever mm -hmm. that might be, whether it's media, whether it's consulting, whether it's consumer packaged goods. What's your side business? What's your side hustle? So I, I just want to say like, that's so important because I've always felt crazy, but I've gotten that from my dad. Like my dad has always been that person where it's like, start this, but then from this thing, these things branch off. So, you know, if this one's a little weaker, you have three other things that are like 
either pushing that or this falls off and then those things kind of like grow on their mm -hmm. own right so separate from this you know my we have we have our own production of like different uh charcuterie like bulgarian style bulgarian meats, meats. Uh, Lukanka, which is Lukanka. like the most popular. It's the like best a in the village. Mm -hmm. The best in the village. The best in the village. The best in the village. When you go to Bulgaria, I, I go every single year to Bulgaria. It's the, the running joke is everybody has the best rakia and the best Lukanka. Oh yeah, that's but that's another part of the that's hospitality. That's the hospitality. It's like you the have pride to come thing. to my house yes. because I have it. It's yes. the best in the village. Like yeah. I just had the best in the village two doors down. No, exactly. No, no, no. You have to come no, and have and they get like They get like competitive and like protective and they'll be like, that person is not doing it the right way or yes. like that, that person's not doing it legally you have yes. to like you know <laughs> doing it legally that's correct <laughs> but but yeah so so we do these meats and they're produced in uh los angeles um at la española they're like huge factory they bring in a lot of foods from spain really great family and we have a good relationship with them and then sasdarma which which is funny because we serve sasdarma in the restaurant and we call it beef and lamb confit mm -hmm. in the beginning when we served it as sasdarma people were like what is this? You yeah. know, like, but now it's beef and lamb confit and it sounds fancy yes. and whatever, but. Rebranding. Yeah, rebranding. So this is beef and lamb. It's, you can eat it cold or hot. It's really nice with like eggs or rice or whatever, or just like as a, as a snack like so that. You so you sell this online? We don't sell it online. We, we ship it though. We oh, ship it ship all it. around the United States. And to then we sell. Different restaurants? Different, re not restaurants, mostly like private clients. Private clients. And then okay. some stores. Like there's a couple stores in town that, that carry our product. They're mostly like uh, the Eastern European, like Mediterranean yep. stores, but they carry the the stuff there, and then uh, and then mostly to like private private mm -hmm. clients. So that's what we do, and then we serve it in the restaurant as well. What What do you think you've learned looking back on your restaurant career? Like, what would you tell yourself when you were younger? I would tell myself that it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> you keep moving forward. And also like what we discussed, it's like, stop, don't, don't expect everybody to like give you praise. Uh, don't compete with people and don't, um, I think that's what, it, don't, don't always try to prove yourself. Yeah. I think, but that's what it is. Like if I started it now, then I don't have that in me where I'm like, oh, I'm going to prove something. But when you're like in, in your younger years, yeah, you're trying to like make your name. You're trying to prove yourself. But it's like you can't cheat the system of time yes. and experience. So just like keep keep pushing forward, make your dreams come true. Whatever you decide, just do it. And like, don't let anybody stand in your way. Just keep going. You like to teach the people listening, the people watching those in the hospitality business. We spend so much time taking care of others, yeah. taking care of our community, taking care of our village, taking care of our staff. We very rarely do we take care of ourselves and very rarely do we ask for help. 100%. Are you good at asking for help? I am better now than I was before, but that, that has a lot to do with, uh, with the, the pride and the ego that I had starting off, like having to prove myself. And then if I, if I asked for help, that would mean that I didn't know and, I, and then people would like catch me for not knowing. But, you know, it's asking for help is one of the most beautiful, beautiful things. And also accepting help, mm -hmm. accepting help. Because sometimes people know, like, if you're not in your best space and they'll offer it. And there's no shame in asking for help. Do you have any mentors in your life? Um, I'm starting to meet those mentors now. I mean, I think my biggest mentors were my parents, like, they were, they were, you know, especially my dad had a lot of experience in business and, and, you know, guided me in, in certain ways, but, um, in the community, yeah, I, I, I have some people that I reach, but it, it, it's getting, it's, it's in that stage where it's like me now being okay to have a mentor. Yeah. So it's nobody like maybe officially, but. Everybody I work closely with in the community, I would consider. How do you work on your business instead of working in your business? Oof. You know, the biggest thing is finding those people and letting go of control so that they can take care of those things so that you can run or work on your business instead of in it. And I'm still that person where now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm helicoptering. Like I need to get out of here. Like they have it. Like I believe in them. They're going to be okay. Even if they make mistakes, it's okay. Because 
I know in the past, like if I had a staff, you know, if someone didn't know something or was like, they were just learning and the, and the, and the guests would get upset because they didn't know. So I'd be like, oh no, I have to take over. Like I have to step in there and like, and, and take that space where it's like, no, like, you have to give people space to make mistakes and then that's how they'll they'll figure out how to like be good for you and 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 you can be good for them so yeah this is this is all like new learning experiences yeah. in the last like 3 years maybe right it is why is social media important for your brand cuz you can just reach so many people like yeah. so many more people you know even with uh, doing the cooking classes and things like that like you know, we can we can fit maybe 50 people here at a time with the with the cooking classes we had. I think our biggest uh, biggest thing was the kachapuri, this dish. Mm -hmm. And we did over like 250 kits. Amazing. So and that's and that's and it all went through social media and people reshared it. Um, and that's how you can show people what you're doing and show people who you are and like connect it with the, connect yourself with the product and, and share it with more people. That's super important. Uh, if you guys are interested, you can always reach out to me, Sean P. Walchef on social, that's at Sean P. Walchef. You can email the show, Sean at calibarbecue.media. Nina, how can people get in touch with you? We'll put links in the show notes. Uh, social media, I have uh, at Forte Tapas, at The Caviar Collective, and at Nina underscore Manchev. That is incredible. So as always, stay curious, get involved, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. If you're inspired, please share the episode with somebody. Thank you so much. Thank Nina, you. Nina, thank you for your Bulgarian hospitality. Uh, we're grateful. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Um, my, March 8th uh, to, to my wife, to my daughter. We're right there in the back to you um, and to all the incredible women. Uh, thank you guys. Enjoy. Uh, we'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Restaurant Influencers. If you are looking to improve your digital hospitality and you would like to learn more about what Toast has done for many of the guests on this show, like Sam the Cooking Guy, Stacey Poonkinney, Matt Horn, they all have trusted Toast to be their primary technology partner, just like we did at Cali Barbecue. When we struggled with online ordering during the pandemic, we knew that we needed to switch from Aloha to Toast. Toast helped us with online ordering. They helped us with loyalty. They helped us with gift cards. Guests can order food when they want on their terms and they can pay from the table. If you want to learn more, DM me at Sean P. Walchef on any social platform and I will get you in touch with the right people at Toast to help scale your restaurant brand.